Today, Teddy got to visit with Frontenac paramedics. And when we arrived, the paramedics asked Teddy if he would like to take a ride on their very cool stretcher. So they put him on the stretcher and loaded him up into the ambulance. Let's head into the ambulance to take a look at some of the really neat tools that paramedics use and learn a little bit more what it's like to be a paramedic. Hi there and welcome to Teddy Bear Hospital Family Day event. We are so lucky to be on adventure today with Frontenac Paramedics. And today we are with Lindsay and Jason and we have Teddy here and he is on the stretcher in the ambulance. Now you need to know Teddy is fine. He has not had an accident. But what Jason and Lindsay are going to do for us today is show us uh, some of the treatments or machines or tools that paramedics might use if you had an accident or if you weren't feeling well. So the first thing that is probably important to know is um, in order for paramedics to know what is happening, we're going to need to do a bit of an assessment and that's going to involve uh, first uh, maybe asking a few questions, but also maybe, maybe touching your arms, your legs, maybe your belly. Uh, to sort of determine uh, if there's any place that is hurting or, or, or what the part of the issue is. The, the other thing that is involved with that is, is getting your heart rate and your blood pressure and a few things like that. And that's going to, going to involve attaching a few pieces of equipment uh, from our monitor here on, onto you um, so that we can get those, those readings. So we'll, we'll do that first. So we'll get uh, Lindsay to pass us... Uh, uh, the first bit, so this is this is a uh, oxygen, uh, going to measure the amount of oxygen in your blood as well as your heart rate. That's just going to go right on your finger. And I'm going to attach the cardiac monitor and this is going to show us your heart rhythm and your heart rate. Okay, and then we also have the blood pressure, which is just a little cuff and that's going to go on Bear's arm. and it's going to inflate and might be a little bit tight on your arm, like a little arm, a hug on your arm for just a few seconds so that we can get a reading of your blood pressure. So we've got a little, little, uh, little clip on your finger, we got blood pressure cuff on your, on your arm, and we got a few dots on your arms and legs so that we can uh, get your heart rate and your blood pressure and, and just Kind of get an idea of, of what all your vital signs are, are doing and uh, as part of trying to figure out what exactly we think is, uh, is, is, is the problem with, with Teddy or, your, or yourself. So once we have you connected to all of our, our tools to help get your vital signs, either before we start putting them on or after they are on, we will reach over and turn on our monitor. As you heard, it just makes a little noise that's it's turning on and it does a quick self check during that time. All of those things are normal. There's the self check. Now that that's turned on, we will start trying to take some of your vital signs. So you're going to hear some other noises. That is the blood pressure cuff starting. That's the only other noise that you'll really hear from this machine. So, um, uh, the numbers here, we have the, the top number here. That's going to be your heart rate, how fast your heart is, is beating. This uh, middle number here, that's going to be the amount of oxygen that's uh, in your blood. And uh, we can also see, here's a, a picture of what your heart looks like when it's beating. And then the very uh, bottom set of numbers, that's what your blood pressure is. So. All of uh, Teddy's uh, vital signs look uh, pretty good, uh, so is, is there, there's no uh, no issue there. He's, he's got a good got a good heart rate, and he's got lots of oxygen in his blood, and his blood pressure is really good. So he's all good that way. One thing that we might do if if you or Teddy has a uh, injured to the to your arm or leg uh, is we could put a splint on it. So we have a little splint right here. Uh, and this is just a little uh, sort of uh, piece, piece of uh, sort of flexible, uh, flexible metal covered in some foam so it's comfortable. And we're just going to mold that up so that it fits into Teddy's uh, leg. Okay. 
All right. Uh, so the other, another, as we mentioned, the other uh, piece that we may do, other than uh, checking some of your vital signs, is doing more of a, a physical exam where we're going to have to, you know, just touch your arms, legs. You might listen to your uh, chest or heart, and uh, so we'll we'll give uh, Teddy a little bit of an exam right now. I'll uh, touch around, and Lindsay here is going to have a listen to his uh, lungs while we're while we're doing that. So. We'll just uh, sort of touch, feel down his arms, and feel down his other arm. Uh, maybe we'll have a feel of his belly. Okay, and then we can feel his leg. And we can feel his other leg. Okay, and feel his head. Neck. Okay, and then we can help Teddy sort of lean forward a little bit here. There we go, Teddy. I'm gonna have a nice deep breath in and out. 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 Very good. Very good. We'll get you all in and out. In and out. In and out. In and out. Excellent. So now that we've learned a little bit about what a paramedic does and what might happen if you were treated by paramedics, I wanted to ask Jason and Lindsay a few questions. So I want to ask each of you, how long have you been a paramedic and what is your favorite part? Maybe Jason, you want to go first? Sure, sure. Uh, so I've been a paramedic for 21 years and um, my favorite part is um, just being able to uh, uh, you know, help help people or almost uh, like so solve their problems. You know, help them when they are having an issue and they don't really know where else to turn. And uh, you know, they they give us a call and just being able to be that sort of, you know, um, that that helping them in that particular moment uh, when they may not have anywhere else that they're able to turn to at that particular time. So. And I've been a paramedic for 14 years uh, since 2007. I've always been in Kingston. I actually am born, or not born in Kingston, but I've been raised in Kingston my whole life. So it's been nice to give back to the community that kind of raised me. Uh, but one of my favorite things is that not all of our patients are very, very sick. So we get to have nice conversations and meet interesting people. That's great. Now, when, when we brought Teddy into the ambulance, you put um, belts and stuff around him on the stretcher. Is there a particular reason that you need to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously the ambulance is a vehicle uh, that's going to, you know, drive to the, uh, to, the, to the hospital and anytime you're in a vehicle, you need to put on a seat belt. Uh, so essentially that, that's what this, those straps are, they're seat belts for Teddy um, when he's on, on the stretcher to make sure that uh, he, you know, he doesn't fall off or roll off or get knocked off or anything like that, right? Uh, you know, when the stretcher is outside of the ambulance and it's, you know, being rolled around, um, you know, making sure that he's secured on there and, and is kept safe, so. Great, and when um, a, ch a child goes in an ambulance, does the adult get to come along with them? Absolutely. We always bring either your mom or your dad uh, but we only typically bring one. That's great to know. So you will never be alone in an ambul ambulance if you ever need to take a ride. Now, when you are not driving the ambulance, are you, do you stay at the station? How long are your shifts? What's it kind of a, a day in the life of a paramedic like? So we typically work 12 hour shifts. Uh, we have different schedules, but the most common schedule for us is we work two days, then we work two nights and then we have four days off. Um, our typical day is a lot of what I like to call hurry up and wait. You have to hurry up, you have to truck your check, check your truck, excuse me, um, and then wait for the pager to go off. And once the pager goes off, we then hurry to a call, we assess and treat Teddy and we take Teddy to the hospital. Once we're done at the hospital, we have to clean all of our equipment and then we have to do all of our documentation. 
In the past two years, all of us have learned how to do things differently. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed how you do things as a paramedic? So the COVID-19 pandemic has definitely changed uh, how we do things. Um, there's certainly a lot more uh, time spent putting on, uh, you know, masks and goggles and, and personal protective equipment. Um, there's screening that has to be done. So we'll uh, ask the person uh, a, a series of questions to, to, to screen them if, to see if they have, uh, if their symptoms are related to COVID or, or not. Uh, and then uh, also at the hospital, uh, because of, they, they need to take a lot more time in cleaning rooms and this sort of thing, um, it can take a little bit longer to get you know checked in and get a, a bed and, and, and that. So, uh, and then uh, like Lindsay mentioned, after the call, we have to pay particular attention to cleaning all of our, all of our equipment, um, the stretcher, the, all of the pieces of equipment that we attach to you, the, the monitoring equipment. Uh, has to all be thoroughly cleaned to make sure that it's uh, safe to use for for the next person. So it, it uh, uh, COVID has definitely added some some time to uh, to each call and and uh, how how we how the call uh, flows. So sometimes your first ride in an ambulance can make you really nervous. Maybe you can describe for everybody what it's like to be a patient in the back of an ambulance. I've never actually been a patient myself, but I've definitely spent many hours back here. Uh, the, one of the big, big differences is that you're facing backwards. So when you're here, you're looking at the cars behind us. So that's one thing that's different, and pe people do like being able to see out. And the other thing is that it's, it's bumpy back here. You would think that the shocks would be better and it would be a smoother ride, but sadly it's not. <laughs> so sometimes if we hit a big bump, it can get pretty clunky and loud. But other than that, it's just a normal car ride.